Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Um, it is 1 1 2019. First of the year. And uh, first of the year, I mean. Um, and I was just perusing the internet and realized that, okay, I bought a new firearm. Well, a, a new. It's used, but it's new to me. Um, but it is uh, something that I bought maybe a month ago and um, it is a handgun um, and it is something that's kind of different for me because I typically buy 9 millimeters um, almost all of my handguns are 9 millimeters I got one that's a 9 millimeter slash 22 TCM which is a Rock Island Armory uh, 1911 um, I also have one that fires 40. I have a Glock uh, 22 Gen 3. Um, that is not really my favorite gun, and the only reason I got it was because uh, Rock Island Armory sells an upper. Uh, they sell a slide and barrel, uh, so that you can before the Glock 22, so that you can shoot a 22 TCM through it. So. Uh, I haven't bought that yet. Um, I I had this fascination for 40 caliber a while back. Um, that gun is, I mean, it kind of broke that fascination because uh, I, I guess I was shooting uh, with a friend and he had a couple of SIGs that he would bring with him every time he went to the range and he'd always ask me if I wanted to go and I would go with him. And, um, one of those uh, SIGs was a 40, <clears throat> was a 40 caliber. Um, I forget what SIG it was. Um, I, I loved it. Um, I had no problem shooting it. Uh, but uh, the Glock 22 is a totally different story because it's a polymer gun. It's very light, um, and so there's no mass to kind of take the edge off of the recoil. So I, that's not my favorite gun as it relates to recoil it's it's even hard for me to be accurate with it because I'm anticipating a recoil so uh, um, so <clears throat> a while back we were discussing uh, this gun so if you look closely and yes it is cleared I will show you in just a second Nothing in the chamber. I'm not going to stick my finger in it. I don't believe in sticking fingers in chambers. If you can't see the round, then it's not there. All right. Uh, that's the whole point of observing. Uh, you always put your eyeball within the chamber. You should be able to see whether or not there's something in there, right? Uh, and that something would be a the, the back end of a of a bullet primer brass steel whatever uh, but you would not see a hole there you would see something in the hole uh, so putting your finger in something where you can actually see that there's nothing in there that's kind of stupid sorry that that's just my take on things so it's cleared um, so so I was going to carry this again this was my first carry gun this is an XD9 uh, subcompact mod 2 so, and you can see the mod 2 this is this is what makes this is what makes it a mod 2 uh, never mind the grip zone um, I, don't, I don't really care about people's thoughts on that um, <clears throat> if you look at every single gun out there they have you can see in fact with this one let's see if we can get the lighting it has badging all over the place <clears throat> that's not unique to handguns it's got badging and trademark uh, and uh, I guess uh all of these different types of uh, branding all over the gun so this grip zone should not really bother anyone uh, besides when you're shooting it can you see grip zone anywhere while you're shooting if I'm looking down the sights and I'm acquiring a target and I'm ensuring that I'm you know I'm, I'm concentrating on getting that that lead to target I'm not noticing the grip zone, right? So I decided out of mind. Um, but anyways, uh, 
I was contemplating carrying uh, this again. Um, I had no issue with this gun. Um, I carried it my first year uh, as a concealed carrier, and uh, I was accurate with it. I had no feed problems whatsoever. Um, I probably have close to 400 rounds out of this gun. Let me double check here. Got my firearms on log. Um, there it is. Okay. 386. And this gave me no problems whatsoever. Why did I switch? Because there was another gun I, I was interested in. This carry better. I think out of all of my carry guns, this is one of the top two that I had no issue carrying. The other one is a Bursa uh, Thunder Plus. Uh, but anyways, um, the magazine is a 13 round magazine. I bought a couple of these for the sole purpose of, ca purpose of carrying. Uh, when I bought this gun, it came with two 10, two 10 round magazines. Um, I, there was a lot of hubbub in that video because people were thinking that uh, I got shafted because someone took the 13 rounders and replaced them with something that is not stock. Uh, trust me when I tell you that <clears throat> the magazines that I bought, or well, the magazines that came with that gun, are stock. You could go on online and order them any from any vendor, a uh, third party vendor, or you can order straight from Springfield. Uh, they are listed as 10 round magazines. They're, they're sold for the purpose of uh, not California, but there's other California like states out there, right? So uh, they have 10 round magazine limits. Uh, DC is one of those. So Instead of buying a gun that comes with two 16, uh, 13 round magazines, excuse me, um, you could buy a, uh, the same gun with that comes with two uh, 10 round magazines. Instead of you buying a gun and not being able to immediately use it, uh, a lot of times you can't even ship a gun in one of those states if it has what they call high capacity magazines. But anyways, why am I talking about this gun? I've already reviewed it uh, more than once. Um, this one. <clears throat> this is my newly acquired handgun. It is an XD45. My two. Um, buy this gun because I enjoyed this one so much I figured I could get this one and this one was at a price that I could not refuse I kept trying to ignore it thinking okay well maybe I'm just buying it because I'm looking at the price and saying oh I gotta have it since it's cheap um, and then I reflected upon this gun and I'm like did you enjoy this gun um, the answer is a solid yes um, and again, there was no problems with this gun whatsoever. Now, <clears throat> what's the difference between the two? There really is no difference. I mean, I think they're sharing uh, pretty much the, the same frame. The only thing is, the only difference between the two frames is that since this is a 45, hold on a second here, I cleared it, but I wanted to show you guys that it was clear. And I was distracted because my daughter was walking by. Um, so it's clear. I'm pointing over there. There's nothing but dirt over there. Um, and I pulled the trigger. So, yes, I am being safe. Uh, but by the way, let's see here. I said the difference between the two is the, f the, the slide is longer. So it's probably to accommodate the bigger gun with I mean the bigger caliber that's being fired out of which needs probably a little bit more time in the barrel to have the uh, sufficient velocity right um, 
So the only difference between these two guns is, and I'm not sure if you can see it, there you go. So you, if you can see the two guns, you can see that one is bitone and one is black. The black is the 45. Um, so it's, it's over here. So if I put them flush together, So one is 3.3 inches and one is 3 inches in length, uh, the barrel. Uh, so there is a weight difference as well. I can feel it between the two. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and give you like these weights and have this like the, the scale here. Um, there's plenty of other videos for that, but I'm telling you now there there's a difference in heft uh, probably because this has a little bit more. Uh, mass but now look <clears throat> if you look at the two barrels and this has been depicted before uh, online as well uh, of course the 45 has the bigger hole and I'm not pointing at the camera I'm pointing to the side of the camera um, now I'm pointing under the camera so if you look at the two holes of course uh, the 45 is bigger right but I believe they're the same barrel they both have the same outer diameter measurement I believe um, it's just that they they took off some metal from the inside of diameter of the uh, the barrel that from what it appears um, so <clears throat> I've taken this to the range um, I fired a decent amount of rounds out of it I don't know how many rounds were fired out of it before I bought it because again it was used right uh, but um, looking at the slide wear, it's really no different than the slide wear on this gun. This gun has close to 400 rounds out of it. In fact, this one probably, let me see. I think this one actually has a little bit more. So it's probably got close to 500 rounds out of this gun prior to me owning it. Uh, but, I mean, other than... Uh, I can see some of the paint wearing off of the uh, the finish wearing off of the uh, the top of the uh, barrel, um, but there is no. Let me see here. Whoever had this might have been carrying it because I do see what looks to be holster wear here, going in and out of a uh, a holster. And whoever owned it probably for some reason didn't like it. I don't understand why. Um, because I fell in love with this gun. In fact, I started carrying this gun. Uh, prior to this, I was carrying a Glock 19 with uh, XS Big Dot sights. I've been carrying it for not quite a year. Um, going from prior to that, I was carrying a uh, what was I carrying? Bursa Thunder Plus. Going from that to a Glock 19, a lot of people say, "Oh, Glock 19s carry nice. It's about as, as you know as nice as you can get and still be a compact gun." I I never got used to that gun. Um, I didn't like the way it, it rode in my uh, on my hip and. Uh, so I'm trying to stick. I have the last three guns I've carried are uh, that, the uh, Versa Thunder Plus, um, the Beretta PX4 Storm Compact, which is actually pretty damn thick. Um, probably a little bit more less comfortable than that Glock 19 was. But what makes them comfortable are the fact that I bought. Um, N82 tactical uh, holsters for them, and two of those holsters were pro holsters. Uh, so for the for, for the Beretta and the Glock 19, I had pro holsters. For the uh, for the Plus, I just had their regular holster that that's kind of that has neoprene along the the barrel and the and the side of the gun. The other two actually have shells. So I was thinking about getting another N82 for this but I already have a holster this is what I had been using with my XD9 this is an alien gear it's an 
<clears throat> in waistband, uh, inside the waistband holster. Um, it is a hybrid holster. Um, so I've got, uh, this is a cloak tuck three. So I had the two and, uh, the inner shell, I guess the inner, uh, material that's between uh, the neoprene here and the leather there's like hard material that's inside uh, with the version 2 model model <coughs> there was plastic in there like hard plastic oh well with my my shells there were I mean my plastic in the inside after usage you would you you could see it you could feel it and probably if you look real close you could actually kind of see it flexing and then after a while you would start hearing a snap so it would break. Um, now, over time, if I kept using it, I guess that break would go through that metal. So what they did, I mean that plastic. So what they did was they added a uh, spring metal in here and you could probably actually see, see it. So it's here and it's I think it's all up in here. Um, it, it's very nice. It flexes, but not enough to break the metal. Um, it just needs to be springy. So it's spring metal in it, spring steel. Um, so <clears throat> the idea was to see if. <clears throat> so here's here's the XD9 in the holster. So. It pulls up easily enough, but what I've done is I've tightened these down to where it is a good bit of retention, so I can pull this out now with some effort. But when it's actually in on my hip, because I have the clips and it's in between, you know, I guess the holster is in between my body. Uh, and, and my pant, well, my pant, how do I say this? So when I'm wearing it, <clears throat> there's there's added retention because I've had I have it secure enough to where um, it's putting additional pressure on the gun and the shell to where it's 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 much more difficult to pull if I'm wearing it. In fact, when I just did that with my hands adding pressure, it was almost impossible to come out. Um, so the idea was to actually use this in the interim for. The XD45, and so I went online to check to see if other people that had the XD9 shell for the cloak tuck uh, 3.0 uh, holster, if they had an XD45 that they were using with it, and I saw a couple of them that said, "Yeah, and that shouldn't be a problem." So I wanted to kind of demonstrate this real quick. So it's totally in the gun, in the holster. There is no play. So this 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 shows that. It's the same frame, it's just a little bit longer here. And you can see it sticking out, which is not problematic for me because <clears throat> I don't care if this is sticking out. What I care about, oh, the only thing I care about is this. So if this is small, then that means it's much more concealable than something that was larger. So, um, so yeah, it fits well. So I've been wearing it. The only thing I don't like about this holster is the fact that if I need to take it off uh, take it off and put it back on uh, a couple of times like if I'm going to places where they don't allow carrying and you know it's federal property and such um, I could go to jail if I'm caught I'm gonna pull it off um, and there are, there have been days where I'm pulling it on and pulling it off you know the holster and putting it in a lock box in a vehicle um, multiple times and uh, with the N82 tactical holsters they're very easy because they're one clip. Uh, they're very easy to get back in and you know get back in your waistband and take off. This one is a lot more difficult. Um, in fact, usually because of the tight pants I wear, I usually have to unbuckle and unbutton my jeans to kind of make some room to slide down in there and then redo pants and everything, right? So uh, this is something I don't want to be fussing with. I can spend time to get it on and off. But it requires me spending time getting it out. 
uh, getting it back on. And uh, a lot of times I don't want to be messing around with it in a parking lot because I don't want people seeing me uh, arming and disarming. Um, and I can't usually do it inside the vehicle. I usually need to be standing up. So, uh, so there is that. So I, I might be looking for an eight uh, square tactical holster. Uh, but anyways, um, <clears throat> this comes with a, uh, this, this particular gun comes with, uh, a 13 round extended mag and a nine round mag. Uh, these are <clears throat> for 45 caliber. So, uh, I'm probably going to order two or three more of these. Um, they're not expensive. Um, I don't really care for the extended uh, magazine because uh, they uh, they're harder to uh, conceal. Uh, so I can use them as a backup. In fact, that's what I'm doing now. I have one in the car. Well, the the only extended magazine in the car in case I need it hidden away. Okay, so this let me double check. Okay, but anyways, um. I just wanted to cover that because I hadn't covered it in an actual video. I do have a blog post talking about what I just talked about, plus uh, some footage from a recent range visit firing that gun, um, as well as, uh, as me talking about some of the particulars of the gun. Um, Alright, have a happy new year.